So today I have an amazing one for you, okay? We are gonna be interviewing Della today. And Della basically was a stay-at-home mom who was attending college. She was trying to get into cybersecurity and she found tech sales. And she decided that tech sales was gonna be a better fit for her because she really enjoys talking to other people and interacting. And so she decided to go into tech sales and within a month and a half, she got a job offer from her dream company for over $100,000 a year. Okay, so Della is an absolute rock star. This is not typical. Most people will get job offers for maybe like 65, 70,000, something along those lines. But Della is just awesome. She got a job offer from a company. She actually skipped the entry level job and went to a job that typically you have to work for a couple of years before you get into. But yeah, don't want to ruin the whole video for you. You definitely want to watch this one until the very end. So go ahead, gently tap that like button and let's jump into it. What's happening, guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today I am very excited to bring on a very special special guest, Della. Thank you so much for coming on the channel, Della. Hi, Shane. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So Della is probably one of the most interesting guests I'm going to have on the channel. She has a super, super cool story, and we're going to get into it. But uh, she was basically able to go from no experience to landing a job in tech sales in about one month or so. I forgot the exact time period. I'll ask her on that. And uh, she was able to make over six figures in one month. So we're going to get into this. Um, but before we get into that, uh, Della, if you could just give me a little bit of a background and kind of just a brief introduction about yourself. Hi. OK, so um, I'm Della and I started out going to college. I graduated from high school and went straight into college and, you know, things didn't work out. Um, I just had some family things going on and I really struggled for years of how to figure it out, how to pay for college and stay focused um, and pay for like, you know, normal everyday life needs. So I bounced around a few colleges um, and I wound up in the military. And after the military, um, I wound up back at college, got my associates in business administration. Um, and then I started going to school for cybersecurity. While in school, um, I realized that, you know, that long troll of uh, college was it was good and it was something I could benefit from, but I felt like there were better options out there. And I stumbled upon force careers and I was able to pivot into a tech sales career. So I was able to combine, you know, some earlier experience in sales with some of the knowledge that I gained while in school for cybersecurity and merge those two worlds and find the beautiful career of tech sales. Got it. So I kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about the college thing. You mentioned this before the interview as well. So you actually went to four different colleges before you kind of stumbled upon uh, tech sales. And when you found tech sales, you were in the process of going to college. I believe you told me you were uh, going to get your cybersecurity degree. And then you basically realize like, this is the career for me. You, you know, you're kind of a type of person where you like uh, remote jobs. That's what, you, that's what I, you told me. But at the same time, you also like talking to other people. So it was almost like a combination of introvert, extrovert sort of thing there. So you like talking to other people, but at the same time, you like remote jobs where you get to work from home. And that's exactly what tech sales provides, right? So can you kind of speak on that a little bit? Yeah, so as far as the college goes, um... I did. I did go to four different uh, colleges, including the my current college. Um, you know, I, I was that student that constantly changed their major. That didn't really know exactly what they wanted to do. Um, I grew up in a household where um, I didn't necessarily have two parents living with me. I didn't have a lot of the advantages, so I didn't just come from that background where you know I just didn't know what I want to do. I didn't really know what options were actually out there. I wasn't really exposed to a lot of professions growing up. So, you know, we were very big on education. Um, I was raised by my great grandmother who was born in the 30s. And so she valued education. She didn't necessarily have the same opportunity that I had. So she was very um, adamant about the importance of education. And I do agree that education is very important. There are also some other factors that go into that, like personality and, you know, um, you know, your what your life is, looks like at that moment. So. I bounced around a um, lot of different majors, a lot of different colleges. And once I was older and I had children, I realized, you know, I do enjoy being around people, but I really needed that flexibility to be able to work from home to, you know, um, have those days where I can still do my job if I don't go into the office, but I still needed to talk to people. Um, I went to, while at Drexel, I was doing online studies. So while I was there, 
you know, I noticed, you know, it was during COVID, everyone was at home, everyone was remote. So I realized, you know, while it's good to be home, I still need to be able to talk to people. So I was able to find, you know, the best of both worlds. And I'm really happy about that. Absolutely. And you know what, I totally agree with you and your grandma on the statement that education is important. I think it might be one of the most important things for for a country. Education is incredibly important. Where I tend to disagree with a lot of opinions out there is where education is synonymous with university, where like some people think that education and university are the same thing. And so university has a monopoly on education. That's kind of what's happened here in the US. And of course, when you have a monopoly, what's going to happen? The prices are going to go up, 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 up. And that's that's exactly what's happened here in the US. A lot of other countries don't have this issue. And in many cases, especially in the modern age with modern technology, and especially after COVID happened and everything went remote, there's just a ton of better ways of getting into careers. And so this is kind of something that you stumbled upon, which was course careers. And let me know kind of uh, how you found it. So um, once I had this epiphany that, hey, you know what, maybe I should look and see if this thing that I'm thinking of is real. (laughs) I started looking around because I wanted to merge tech and sales. So I didn't even know if it was an actual career at the time. I started looking on everywhere, YouTube, TikTok, wherever I could look. Um, And then I just realized that, you know, I found the the term, you know, SDR. So then I typed that into uh, Indeed to see if, hey, you know, maybe I can just apply and see if my skills transfer over. Um, And I actually found an ad for course careers on Indeed. And the thing that stood out to me was the connections that, Troy gave you the fact that he walked with you, you know, through your interview process, he was going to stay and have weekly meetings with you. And that was something that was unique to course careers. Um, I, to my knowledge, don't know of any other online course or, you know, even just apprenticeship where they literally, you know, help you every step of the way and they don't let go. And I still communicate with Troy um, regularly. So it's something that you get a long-term relationship with someone who has been in the field for years and is, you know, was a great uh, account executive. And, you know, that's what really stood out with course careers. Um, Upon reflection though, I think that now looking back, the best thing about course careers is that you're not learning to ride a bike at a seminar. You know, if you're familiar with the book, um, you actually get role play experience. You actually get to hear the types of questions that you could ask on a discovery call, the type of demo questions, and you really get experience versus just theory. That's interesting that you mentioned that because uh, I was just doing a bunch of research on different like tech sales boot camps and stuff. And Troy sort of told me about tech sales boot camps, but I hadn't really paid too much attention to them. But there, there are boot camps that literally charge you thirty thousand dollars, and they're the very common ones. Like these are ones that like thousands and thousands of people use every year, and they charge you thirty thousand dollars. And I believe it takes three to four months before you even finish the boot camp and and start to apply to get a job. So course careers is getting you know I'll you know I'll just spoil it for everybody. It's four hundred fifty dollars uh, if you use the. $50 off coupon, which I'll you know link down in the description in the pinned comment below. And it's getting people jobs, but a lot of people one month, two months, somewhere around there, sometimes like three months if you're doing it part time, it's getting people jobs very fast. And you know, you contrast that course careers, how hands on it is how it's getting people jobs fast, it's teaching you the information really quickly. It's $450 versus a $30,000 boot camp, right? And maybe they aren't even getting people as good of results because they probably do a bunch of other boot camps like software development and, and you know, digital marketing and all this other stuff. And so they probably don't even have like a central focus on tech sales like Course Careers has right now. So yeah, Troy just does a phenomenal job. Um, he, you know, that's the reason why I partnered with him because he, I'm just, I saw the results he's getting people and it's just like, out of this world. It's better than anybody else in the industry by a mile. So one thing I'll say is a lot of people recommend course careers for those trying to pivot into a new industry. But I would like to go on the record and also say that, you know, course careers is also for that SDR that for some reason, you know, you're making your dials, you might be just hitting average or you might be just barely making quota. Course careers can help you elevate your skills because you're not just learning, you know, the role. You're really learning how to enhance your sales skills, really learning those soft skills of listening, discovery, you know, negotiating, um, really 
getting to those pain points. So anyone who is already in an SDRO or you're already in tech sales and you want to just get better, Course Careers is also for you. All right. So you you took the course, uh, you went through Course Careers. How long exactly did it take you to go through all the curriculum? So it was about a week and a half. Um, I dedicated. <laughs> what? Week and a half. You are, yeah, you are something was... else. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So what I'll say is I, I like to preface it with this. Um, I used to be that person that couldn't finish anything. Like I said, I would bounce around majors. I couldn't finish college. And at the start of um, 2022 this year, I read uh, Napoleon's, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. And I got the condensed version and I would read it every single day. Um, and it really taught me how to build up that muscle and strengthen my will and really like see the thing that you want and, and don't stop until you get it. You know, that's awesome. You got through it in about a week and a half. And then um, you started getting uh, interviews. So from the time you started course careers to the time you got your first job offer, how long was that approximately? Um, I believe it was a month and a half just because there was the company I work for now or the organization I work for now. I really, really wanted to work for it was like, <laughs> I'd have panic attacks just thinking about it like, oh God, I you know, I was so excited because they were in that cybersecurity field, you know, um, and one of the things that I wanted to do was be a security consultant. So now I get to kind of wet my feet with the security consultant and, you know, still be able to consult uh, on, you know, cybersecurity, you know, um, different, you know, solutions and products that will help. So uh, it took me about a month and a half. I spaced my interview out and I would make sure to meet with Troy prior to going into the next step of the interview. And he, you know, would help coach me and say, hey, here's what you need to say. This is what how you need to, you know, present yourself and, you know, really give me those things that I wouldn't have gotten anywhere else. Got you. And I, I, I think I remember because I watched your interview with Troy. I think I remember they actually reached out to you. Is that correct? So, so your that dream is- company... When they found out that you were going through course careers because they're partnered with course careers, they the was it the vice president of sales actually reached out to you? Yeah, it was the VP of SMB sales. He reached out and um and then even prior to that, the internship manager reached out. So I definitely, yeah. <laughs> wow. I definitely got their radar. <laughs> um, but I will say it was it was one of those situations where um I knew that that was a company I worked for. And one thing that Troy definitely encourages is heavy LinkedIn presence. So I said, hey, it only makes sense that if I'm going to have a heavy LinkedIn presence, I want to be in their face. (laughs) So I was adding as many people as I could. I was commenting on, you know, anything that was related to that organization. I would comment on it. I would like it. I would, you know, really put myself out there and make myself known. So that definitely helped. Got it. And did they find you through the certificate? Uh, like, did you put that you were going through course careers? Is that how they found you? Um, so I put that I was going to course careers, uh, but I also was just, you know, adding, hey, you know, I'm really interested in becoming, you know, working for your organization. Just a little quick message and I would send a, um, a LinkedIn request. And I know sometimes we grow up with the mindset of, you know, don't talk to strangers or people are out to get you. You know, we kind of teach children to be wary of strangers. But I will say this. Um, I've never met a successful person that is not willing to help someone that wants to help themselves. So if you really like reach out for help and you really show that, you know, you are willing to help yourself, people will help you. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with that as well. So you landed the role after about a month and a half or so um, of starting course careers, which is which is that in and of itself is, is amazing. Um, how much did they offer you or how much typically do they tend to offer? people in a role like that okay so um yeah we can talk a little bit about salary so um for the role that i'm in i actually was able to land a full sales cycle role um i initially thought i was you know going to get an sdr role but they actually uh interviewed me and really liked my skills and really liked all the information and the the ability that i had with sales based off of what troy taught me and the things that i learned in that um in course careers. And they offered me an account manager role, which is full sales cycle from prospecting all the way to closing. Uh, and in that role, it is very easy and very common to make over six figures. Um, it's really up to you because it's sales. So there's also some commission uh, in, incorporated in that salary. But there's people who can, you know, make, you know, six figures and even, you know, 
a couple of hundreds if 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 you really really you know have you know really work hard i'll say that that is awesome also really curious your thoughts on personality and like what types of personalities would do well in tech sales yeah that's actually a really great question um i think it's a common assumption to think that extroverts are best at sales and they're the only ones that can do sales but what i found through listening to different podcasts and meeting a lot of people in tech sales um, introverts actually do really well. Uh, as long as you work on, you know, when it's time for you to speak, you can do really well. There's a lot of listening skills in tech sales. You know, you're not going to be that used cars, car salesman that's shoving, you know, products, feature, 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 benefit, benefit in their face. Uh, what the role really entails of is really listening and hearing those pain points of the other person, which, you know, introverts are typically very good at. Um, and then, you know, building that relationship. And then from there, you're able to make recommendations based off of what, you know, your your prospect or your your client says. So I think that it's good for any personality. Um, don't think that because you're more introverted, you're not going to be able to do it. Don't think that because you're extroverted, you're going to be absolutely great at it because, you know, it's a skill and anyone can develop a skill. And if I can do it, you can do it. Anyone can do it. Got it. And then what would you say to somebody who is kind of Thinking about uh, going into tech sales, but they're on the fence. They're not sure if they should go into it. They're also not sure if they should, you know, use course careers to get into it. What would you say to that person? I would say try it. You know, there's no harm in trying. Course careers is a great way to test out the role and see if it is for you. Um, because you get that hands-on experience. You're not just like learning theory. You're not just learning, you know, um, you know, you're not just reading and taking tests. You're actually getting a chance to really get on the bike with the, tr the training wheels and, you know, try it out. And you also have opportunities to take the training wheels off and actually, you know, do the role. Um, and it gives you some practical experience to throw on your resume. So the best advice I can say is, you know, there's no harm in trying, you know, you, you might lose out on $500 or 450, but, you know, think of all the other places that you waste that at, you know, Taco Bell for a year, McDonald's for a year. <laughs> I'm sure it's more than that. You know, <laughs> absolutely. Um, one last thing I'd like to add that helped me. Uh, I think gone are the days where, you know, you worked one job and you stayed there until you retired. Now that works for some people and it's great. It's still a great option. But in this more modern world, um, I don't like to look at the current role that I'm in as my career. I like to look at the whole experience that I've had, my work experience. All of that is my career. So what I like to the way I like to view it is um, every different role increases my skills in different this skill, that skill, you know, but as I continue to grow and evolve as a woman, as a person, um, I'm able to fill different roles. I'm able to add to my tool belt and I'm able to, you know, work in different fields. And to me, it gives me a more full career versus just one role in one, you know, um, just doing one thing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I just, I have to, I like some novelty. I like switching it up. I like adding things. And one thing I like to add is, you know, when you approach it from that standpoint of, Hey, you have to pick one thing and that's the only thing you can do forever. It makes the decision really big and really large. And maybe you're not going to be in tech sales forever, you know, but in this moment, while it works for your situation and while it works for you, you know, go for it and plunge and take the deep dive and get the full experience. And then maybe later on, something else might come up a better opportunity or something that might fit you later on down the road. And you can try that too. And then another thing I always like to mention is I actually heard this from Tim Ferriss uh, and I just thought it was brilliant. Um, and that is learn skills where you win, even if you lose. Right. And so what does that mean exactly? That means there are certain skills out there that are so valuable that they're going to come in handy pretty much no matter what direction you go in life. Sales is definitely one of those skills. Marketing is another one. Uh, operations. Customer service is actually great too. Um, content creation is another one, very scalable. And, you know, there's these certain types of skills where if you, if you learned it and, you, and you, you, know, you got into it and then for whatever reason it didn't work out, that's great. You lost, but you won because you learned these skills and they're going to just be super useful no matter what direction you go in your life. So would you say, uh, Della, that tech sales is one of those skills? Absolutely. I think it is one of those skills that, you know, will benefit you whether you stay in tech sales, whether you go into anything. I mean, you can even look at it from a standpoint of 
you know, when you go to the doctor, you don't walk in and he just says, oh, I think you have arthritis, throw something at you, you know. No, they, they sit and they listen and they do discovery. You know, they want to hear what's going on. They need to see what's going on with you before they can make a diagnosis. So just having those soft skills, those are transferable to any, just about any career. Um, I don't think that you'll ever run into problems learning how to listen, understand and hear the pain and then make recommendations. So I definitely think that, you know, there is no loose situation in this scenario. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much again for coming on. Uh, I think you probably have the coolest story out of anybody I've ever interviewed so far. So I really appreciate you coming on the channel. I know you were super busy because you're starting the role. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for coming on. I think you're going to help a ton uh, of people who listen to this. I think a lot of people are going to be inspired by this and it's going to make a big difference. Thank you so much, Shane, for having me. I'm really, really honored to be a part of your show.